Hello friends, it's Patrick. I'm going to teach you a little bit about writing interactive fiction in ink using Inky from Inkle. I know that is a lot of ink, but that's what we're here for. So we're going to start off our new story with a knot. Uh, a knot uh, starts with triple equals and that has a name. And it needs to have some content in it, so here's some sweet content. Now you notice that while I'm typing, errors sort of appear and disappear, and that's because Inky, this text editor, is compiling my whole story into, into code uh, while I type, which is great. Basically, I know as soon as something goes wrong, and I know whether it's an error or a warning, whether it's something that would actually like completely break my story or maybe just uh, slightly break my story. So the reason it's complaining now is because um, my story runs out of content. Um, so basically what it wants is to me to say end. Basically saying, I intend this incredibly sweet, this incredibly short story to be over here. Um, the other thing that I would recommend for all new ink writers is always start writing within a knot. You'll be happy you did later. There are more minimal ways to write ink, um, but if you're writing anything of any like size uh, and complexity, you're gonna want knots. So start with a knot, and then your story, see over here is the pane that's supposed to show how my story will actually play through, you know, like ink code on the left, story flow as seen by the player on the right. But we're seeing end of story here and not my sweet content. So why is that? That's because I do need to tell my story where to start. Um, and I do this with a divert. So a divert is an arrow, and then the name of a knot. So my knot here is called knot, which is not super helpful. But anyway, I just wanted to show that this now means, my, basically the story flows from top to bottom. And the first thing it hits now is a divert, which says go to knot. And then it goes to knot, it prints some sweet content, and then it goes to end, and that's the end of the story. So that's my incredibly short ink story over here. Let's make this better. So first, um, let's actually like, try to uh, write a little dumb story. So let's say it's a murder mystery. Um, what you could do is use knots to model uh, uh, parts of the story. So let's say like it's a whodunit. So now I'm gonna copy and paste that to redirect to my whodunit. And um, then let's have some dialogue here. So um, let's say it's, uh, what's the name of that detective? Poirot. Yeah, it's freaking Poirot. It's like, I believe I have identified the culprit. Uh, and then uh, uh, Agatha Christie is here for some reason. Uh, breaking the fourth wall here. Um, so this is now my very, uh, very short story. Um, and basically, uh, each line it, with ink is like sort of a, treated somewhat separately. So, uh, you know, it's getting, it's, uh, hitting this line, then it's moving down to that line. Super simple. Um, let's introduce, uh, a choice. So this is a big, this is something that you find in almost every ink story. Uh, choices, uh, are marked with a star. So, um, I, uh, doubted him is one choice. Um, and then I uh, agreed that the culprit was known to all. Um, and you'll see it's actually trying to autocomplete here. So if I, if, um, if you want, you can hit tab and it will like midline. Um, so anyway, these are two choices and now we can see they're um, laid out here on the right. And then choices have to have consequences, right? So the way, uh, the most basic way you can do that in ink is just put the consequences underneath. And I recommend you always indent these. It doesn't actually matter to ink whether you indent or not, but it makes your story much easier to follow. Um, so uh, we'll say, how dare you doubt me? Uh, and then down here, I'm copying and pasting. I'm going to say, like, don't steal my thunder, Agatha. Um, we're Agatha Christie in this story, BT dubs. Um, so, whoops. Oh, I actually hit command save. So let's actually save this. We'll save this and call it um, uh, 
my uh, first ink story. Okay, so, um, oh, unfortunately, this is now pulling in other ink files that I happen to have in this directory. That's not super helpful. Let's ignore that for now. Okay, um, where were we? Okay, so I've got two choices. Um, and if I click one of these, what's gonna happen is it's going to play the content that's nested under the choice I clicked. So uh, I should see, um, if I click I doubted him, it says Poirot. First of all, this is important. It prints the, uh, the choice text by default. So it actually prints into the story flow on the right, I doubted him. And then it moves on and says, how dare you doubt me? And then it complains saying it ran out of content. Now, the reason this is, is because basically this, the story branches here. So um, we're now inside of this branch and there's actually no, no code that says come back out of this branch and back to where we were before. Like this, this code here like never gets reached. So um, I can uh, duplicate that code here and now this branch is saying I'm running out of content and so I can duplicate that here if I want to. And um, this is not a bad practice because this does, uh, it kind of drives home the fact that your story always has to go somewhere. Like if you're building a big game, if there's any point at which the ink interpreter literally has nowhere left to go, uh, your game is broken. There's no recovering from that. And so it's important that ink is constantly reminding you that you might have left a, a sort of a dangling branch that can, that goes nowhere. So these errors are helpful. Um, and you can also sort of just leave them there as a reminder that you need to, um, that you do need to go back and finish writing that. Um, okay, so this is all super, super basic ink stuff. But in real life, your story doesn't end here, of course, right? And in most cases, it's just going to keep going. Uh, and so in this case, um, Agatha uh, Poirot says, how dare you doubt me? And maybe I have uh, Christy say something more. Um, by my wits, I'll show you. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not a good writer. Okay. Um, so I showed him the bloody handkerchief is one choice. Now, here's this is important. I'm now nesting a choice inside of a choice. And because I said the um, indentation doesn't matter to ink, it's just there for humans to read it. Um, what you need here is two stars to show that this is a sort of a second order choice, that it, that it belongs underneath this star. If I didn't do that, then ink would interpret this as three choices. See, so if I, I, I click the left hand arrow in the upper right, which is basically rewinds the story by one choice, it's super handy while you're writing. And so now it's grouping, I showed him the bloody handkerchief as a part of that first set. So, um, and that's still true even if I indent it like this. Not true if I properly give it two stars. Now it recognizes, oh, okay, I have two choices in the first order, and then if I say I doubted him, then I have one choice. But normally one choice is no choice at all, so I'll make a second one here. I showed him the muddy boot print. Okay, so, uh, and this sort of just uh, continues on this way, right? Now I can click a show the motor blueprint and it says, oh no, I'm out of story. So um, here I could keep branching. Um, I can't spell right. Poirot. Um, how horrifying. And so on. So, um, and you could keep doing this. You could do three stars, you could do four stars, but eventually this, this style, in my opinion, gets very messy. So there's two, there's two ways out of, out of this to continue the story on, and I'll, I'll kind of go over both of them. Um, okay, so um, once again, Inky is saying, you, I ran out of content, this is terrifying, this is, your game is broken, which is true. It's a, it's a really good piece of advice. Um, okay, so there's two things I can do. Um, one is called a gather. So basically this is a uh, hyphen and uh, then you just continue on with your story. So um, so what this says is remember how I mentioned we are we're creating a branch every time there's a star where you know now it's going into this content and it's never, 
it's not not going in here at all right it's totally bridge similarly once you make this choice you are no you're out you'll never see the second choice and if you make this choice you'll never see the first choice um, what the uh, branch mark does is it says um, rejoin these two branches so basically whatever whatever business I got into down here um, after you have run out of content here rather than complaining about running out of content jump to the next gather point so um, jump back out here now actually gathers have to work the exact same way as um, as uh, stars which is if you're nested one deep, uh, you're going to want to, uh, you, you need to do two here. So um, let me just make sure this is right. Okay, so basically what this now says is uh, regardless of whether I show him the bloody handkerchief or the muddy footprint, let's say the bloody handkerchief. Uh, now it says, how horrifying, which is on line 11. Uh, a gasp was heard in the room, line 12. And then it jumps because of the gather to line 15. I thought you might say so. And if I wind back and show him the, the muddy boot print, uh, now we go to how mystifying, I thought you might say so. So um, this is a way to really quickly uh, branch your content and have like slightly different um, bits of narration, bits of action, etc. but then get back into the main line. And this is a very, very common thing in interactive fiction because you can't you know, you, every time you have a choice, you can't branch your entire story or you would literally never be done writing. <laughs> and what's more, you would have written all this branching content and yet a single player would only ever see one path, right? So branching is really important in terms of presenting choice and consequences, um, but it's really deadly in terms of workflow. And so you have to be very smart about when you do it. And, um, and this technique of gathering, of rejoining your branches, is key to that. Um, and I should also show, uh, say that, you know, this is, I've been exploring this one, I doubted him choice. I've ignored this one down here. And so I think I need to, um, you know, explore that really quick. And uh, here, uh, Christy will say, uh, oh, hush, Poirot, this isn't about you. And um, I think what I want to do here now is I actually want to uh, gather here on the outer layer. Basically, so I'm creating a gather for the first choice. Um, I'm just going to show ink that I'm done here. Um, and uh, so basically, this means that after this whole branch is done, regardless of what I choose, this branch is done here. And then it's going to gather, and you know, and this branch is done here on line 18. Now line 19 says gather back here after all of that other stuff is done. So the last line here would be, Christy, I thought you might say, I thought you might say so. Um, I'm that the oh hush poro doesn't follow after that. So um, let's have her say something pretty generic. Like she'll just say something like. Let's just focus on the evidence. Evidence, shall we? Um, so now my store, my 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 little two branches here, my second order ones gather here, and my big branch, my outer branch, um, gathers here. Um, and you can tell that by the number of the marks, right? The twos line up with the twos. The one lines up with the ones. And so um, if I do uh, rewind back to the start of my story, I can now um, always get back. I agree that the culprit, culprit was known to all. Don't steal my thunder. Let's focus on the evidence, shall we? If I rewind back, I doubted him. I showed him the muddy boot print. How mystifying. I thought you might say so. And, um, oh, this is, I, I shouldn't actually mark done here because we are not done. The done is basically uh, saying don't gather. Don't like this, you know, this, this flow is actually over. Uh, I should delete that. And now it, uh, it joins back up. So, I mean, this shows the fact that I kind of missed that detail shows the importance of uh, uh, um, constantly testing your story in, uh, in Inky and just sort of watching how it flows, backing out and um, testing uh, different flows and making sure that it, um, 
it makes sense to you. I also want to give you two quick uh, inky tips before I leave you uh, from this segment. Um, one is it's super valuable to, if I'm holding down Alt now on my keyboard or Alt or Option, uh, depending on your whether you're on Windows or Mac, but when I do that, um, you see these words are hovering, and this basically lets me jump to the point in my code on the left where that word came from. So if basically as your story gets super complicated, you might not realize, we might not remember where our gasp was. So if I alt click on gasp, it brings me, it highlights that line over here. If I alt click on uh, how dare, or how, how horrifying, now I realize, oh, okay, I was too, de too deep over here. So I find that um, a super handy uh, trick. Um, okay, so I hit save, and um, and I'm gonna uh, next next round next time I'm gonna show the other way to uh, branch content um, without like getting crazily nested deep, you know, um, and that's called uh, using s stitches. So a uh, quick recap also of our vocabulary so far: we have a divert, we have a knot. This is a knot with equal equal equal. A name and all of this content can be said to be inside of that knot. Uh, we uh, and this is a divert to the to the knot name, right? And this is a divert to done, which is essentially a special knot that says the story is over. Um, so uh, that's kind of the that. Oh yeah. So uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> divert, knot, uh, choice, uh, and gather. That is all the vocabulary we've covered so far. Um, hope this was helpful. And I'll make another one of these soon. Thanks for watching.